morning everyone. So today we are going to be looking at planning websites, next step in our web development process. Please excuse if any of the cats happen to walk across the screen. Um, they do have a habit of trying to get my attention all the time when I'm at home. So planning websites, things you need to consider. Okay, go that way, good boy. All right. <clears throat> nature of the interactivity. The first thing we need to consider is how interactive is our page going to be. Now there are two types of website out there which have come around since Web 2.0 and the first one is a static website, the second one is a dynamic. Now a static website as the name suggests is a website that doesn't move. So no interactivity. All the users can do is read what's on the page. Generally speaking, quite boring sites. Useful if you've got a lot of information to get across. Um, you don't want people to be able to do anything other than read that information. You really don't get many information-only static sites these days. Most of them are now dynamic. Dynamic sites are exactly the opposite. They provide a level of information, a level of interactivity. Now, pretty much any site you look at is going to have some form of interactivity, even if it's something as simple as having a drop down box or a form on them. Most websites now have a higher level of activity than even that. Something for example like Facebook is an extreme example. You've got games, you can post to people and everything you do is shared and that goes on all the time. If you've got a shop like Amazon Yet another fantastic example of interactivity and a dynamic website in terms of how you can interact. You've got shops on there, you've got chat clients on there so that you can contact someone on Amazon, you can make wish lists, follow that around. So that is one thing that you need to consider. Do you want a dynamic website? which is full of interactivity, or do you want a static website where all the users can do is read the information? Which of course leads us on to the purpose of the website itself. Now, we need to be able to define the purpose of the website so that we know exactly what we're going to put on it. So if you're building a website with the idea of sharing Show information about blobfish, for example. Uh, most static websites would fall under this, or you might put videos and animations on it. And uh, that would be an information website. Another type of website that you would have would be a online store. So people can go onto your website, they can buy products that you, that you have for sale on there. Um, you could have, brain's not quite working yet this morning. You could have a website that works as a catalogue. I always spell catalogue wrong, so I apologise in advance. In advance, I fancy them. That's close enough. So you've got catalog websites, you can buy stuff, but you don't necessarily have it for sale on there. People can ring up and order stuff from you, or you list stuff and you can buy it from another site, or you're selling services. So you might be selling your services as a web designer, and people need to contact you to get prices, quotes, and to actually book a site to be done. You might be an online plumber. 
obviously well, you can't sell much of your services as a plumber on the internet. It doesn't work too well, fixing drains via wireless connections. But people will need, still need to be able to find plumbers. And a lot of people, when they're looking for something now, their first port of call, rather than being the yellow pages, it is an actual physical book, is to go to maybe yell.com and search for plumber. Or Google and search for plumber as well. Straight out. Go straight there. It's the kind of age we live in. We're used to, we're now used to being able to just go on a computer and find what we need. So there are more purposes of information than just those three. But those are the three that we need to know about. Or <clears throat> three of the main ones anyway. We also need to consider our client and user needs for our website. Now, some of these would actually be the same as what we've already looked at. So when we've looked at unit 30 and unit 31, we have already started specifying some ideas of what we want the client and user needs. And some of those are still going to apply, like house styles. There's a space in the middle of it. That would help. We need to consider the house style if we're building a website for someone, for a business, and they've already got a style set up. We would need to consider also for the client the cost of having the website built, but also the cost of maintaining. Because a lot of clients that you get aren't going to know how to maintain a website, they're probably going to want you to maintain it for them. How you would set that up uh, with a website designer is entirely up to you. Some people do it per update, some people do it as a bulk buy, so you get an update, you get a change to something else. And some people will say, I will do an update once a month for a flat rate of this, for whatever you want, whatever, for what you want updating. <coughs> Excuse me, it does tend to vary. But the cost of building and maintaining the site is something very important for the client. Another thing for the client, which it, we haven't come across before. There we go. Let's go that way. Is this thing. Search engine optimization. Which we usually call SEO. I love acronyms. Yay! Acronyms. Search engine optimization is the process of setting your site up so that it is easy to find by Google. Now, Google change how they're searching for websites all the time. And it's quite hard to keep up. Things it, it usually looks at, and a new thing that's coming out, Google now looks for mobile ready websites. So if your website has a mobile friendly layout or mobile friendly site and your competitor's website doesn't, that will rank you above them. They use a piece, a set of HTML tags, which we will look at, called meta tags. And in that we put all the information, keywords, description for our website and Google search engine goes along, indexes all of that and matches what you have put in there against what people are searching for. The better your meta tags, the higher you come up the rankings. And since the advent of HTML5, Google now also uses the tags in the HTML document itself. It used to just scan through the HTML and all the content on it in one great big sweep. Now it uses different tags to rank the information differently. So that is another bit that um, Google will use. Now I'm going to have to carry on in a second video so I will be back with you momentarily. <laughs> 